If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. We have the skier beginning 20 meters off the ground on the hill. He slides down that hill and reaches point B, at which point he's moving at 20 meters per second, and then he's going to coast until he comes to rest over here at point C. And our job is to use the conservation of energy to determine the coefficient of kinetic friction along the surface from B to C. And it turns out that we really don't even need the information pertaining to his initial height. All we really need to do is consider the initial position over here at point B, which we can label initial, and then his final position over here at the point C, where the final speed of the skier is zero meters per second. So we can label that as being final. And so that's going to be our focus. We can actually remove the hill from this scenario. Now again, we are asked to use the law of energy conservation, so why don't we write out that law. On the left-hand side of the equation, we have the initial energies, which are marked Ke and Pe with little i subscripts to represent initial. Of course, Ke is kinetic energy and Pe is potential energy. We have the corresponding final values on the right-hand side of the equation, and then we also have this energy term here, which is going to represent the work done by friction as the skier is brought to rest. Now we'll notice that the skier is moving along a level surface and therefore the potential energy is not actually changing in this problem. So we can actually eliminate the potential energy terms from this equation. Also, because the final speed of the skier is zero, that means the final kinetic energy will also be zero. So we can remove that and that simplifies the equation. We can elaborate these two expressions by noting that the kinetic energy would be one half times the mass of the skier times his initial speed squared. And then for the work done by friction, we would remember that the work is equal to the force, which is going to be some kinetic friction, multiplied by the displacement that the skier is undergoing from point B to point C. And the displacement can be written as the position at C minus the position at B. This is essentially one way of representing the displacement. Now, the kinetic frictional force is going to equal the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force that's acting on the skier. And so we can write Fn for normal force. And for that normal force, we need to consider a free body diagram of the skier. Now, we'll represent the skier as a dot. We have the downward gravitational force, which is mg, and then the surface is pushing up on the skier, and that would be your normal force. And then also we have this kinetic frictional force, which is pointing in this direction. Now we can see that because the skier is not accelerating in the vertical direction, that means that the upward normal force has to be equal in magnitude to the downward gravitational force. In other words, we can replace Fn with mg in our equation. And then conveniently, because mass appears on both sides of the equation, if we divide both sides of the equation by the mass m, the masses will cancel out. And then since we're looking for the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is this mu k term, we can divide both sides of the equation by g times the displacement. And by doing that, we're going to cancel out those terms on the right hand side of the equation here and that's going to leave us with mu k. And then at this point we can simply plug in the known values. The initial speed of the skier was given as 20 meters per second so we can plug that in. We know of course that g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared and then this term xc minus xb which was the final position minus the initial position that's just the displacement and we can see from the picture and from the given information that that displacement is 68 meters. So we'll plug that in. We'll pick up our calculators. And when we punch that all in, we can see that the coefficient of kinetic friction turns out to be approximately 0.3. And so this is the correct answer to the question.